Hey guys, it's Vi. Welcome back to my channel and I have some exciting news for you today. EA has given me a free early access code for the new Sims 4 Vampires Game Pack, which means you get to check out some of the new stuff with me for the very first time before you guys can even purchase this. So here we go guys, here's our new icon for Forgotten Hollow. Look at the bats going, okay? I have not been in here, I have not checked out anything. This is all first impressions, first time ever seeing this. So let's click on Forgotten Hollow and check it out. Here we are. This is Forgotten Hollow, folks. It looks like we have a total of five different uh, lots. We have one that is completely empty, Feldermaw's Bend. It's a 30 by 30. We have this one right here, Widow Shield Townhome. It's a one bedroom, one bathroom for 19185 And it has a lot trait that is registered vampire layer. And I don't know what any of that stuff does, but we're gonna have to check out those kinds of things when we get into the build mode section here. We have this one, Garlic Clouter Place. It's 50,393 simoleons. And this one has a lot trait, Vampire Nexus. We have this one, which actually has Sims inhabiting, the Vader family. It's a 30 by 30, and let's see if it shows us anything for the lot information. It says the Vader siblings, so they are siblings, moved into Forgotten Hollow a few years ago and are striving to make it their home. This can be quite challenging at times since they are not exactly on the best terms with Vladius Stroud. But when asked, they only ever mention a difference in their culinary tastes. So it doesn't tell us any indication about the house itself, just the people that are in it. So we have Caleb Vader. Um, he has the good vampire um, aspiration. This sim wants to control his thirst and remain as human as possible. And he gets gregarious. Uh, they build friendly relationships faster. He is an ambitious sim, a foodie sim, and he's a materialistic sim. If I'm not mistaken, Caleb Vader is one of the guys that was on the trailer and everybody was excited and wanting him to be in the game and i'm pretty sure this is the vampire that we saw uh his sibling is lilith vader she wants a vampire family she wants to create a family of vampires she's got the domestic trait she is outgoing she's creative and she is an active sim so there's the siblings that live together here and like i said i don't know the details on the house at this time i'm sorry i cannot give that to you uh let's see oh no we have the lot details so here we go it is called wolfsbane manor it's 142,984 to purchase it. This Italianite Victorian manor is large enough to, re to really stretch your wings. Its upscale decor will suit those with a taste for fine design. There are no lot traits assigned to this one. And actually, I wanted to look at this one then. Garlic Louder Place is 50,393, like I said. And it says this Victorian is the Gothic revival style. It's Previous tenants went a bit overboard with the garlic decoration for unknown reasons. And this one, we're going to look at this one real quick. This was the Widow Shield Townhome. The simple townhome maximizes space by building up. There's now plenty of room for a garden. Minor repairs are needed. Uh, this one was the blank lot, as you know. And this is our very last one that we need to explore. This is Count Vladius Stroud the fourth. I think the IV is four. I'm not very good with my Roman numerals. I kind of suck at that. Let's meet Vladius Stroud. He is a master vampire. This sim wants to become wise and powerful vampire. He has a quick learner trait. He is a music lover. He is a loner sim and he is evil. So these two households do not really get along with each other. So this is Vladius Stroud and his house details Count Vladius Stroud IV is the latest descendant to occupy Stroud Mansion. His oddly similar looking line of ancestors has resided here since the founding of Forgotten Hollow. And the house details on this one, it is 201,929 simoleons. This mansion has been slowly built up over the town's history, plenty of space, and spare coffins. 
So that is all of the lot stuff information for you guys. So here's the stuff for the build mode. We got a dry pine tree. This evergreen pine is no longer so evergreen. And we have two different choices for our pine trees. We have this one, which is kind of a rusty brown color. And the other one we have is a nicer green color. So there we go. I kind of like the, the deadish looking one. I love the details on this. They did such a good job with that. So there's that pine tree. We also got a scraggly tree. This tree suffers from neglect. Its scraggly branches are great for casting scary shadows on moonlit nights. So here is a tree that we got and it is kind of a creepy tree. I kind of like it though. It's nice. <laughs> We have a dead hawthorn tree. Lack of care has left this tree lacking in curb appeal. Legend says that once upon a time this tree was a beautiful tree, but now it seems it's not, unless this style is something that you fancy. Ooh, wow, that's huge. Okay, we're going to tuck that in the corner, at least as best as we can. That is a huge piece. We have this one, the bear pine tree. This tree is past its prime. Its dwindling foliage gives it an ominous look. And here's a tall one. Oh, I kind of like that one. It only takes up a single tile. Yay. Look at that. You could really stack those up, couldn't you? Because this one takes up four. This one takes up four. But check this out. This only takes up one. You could really stuff those together. Awesome. So we got those. It doesn't look like... Oh, we did too. Okay, so we're going to have to like scroll through everything. It looks like we got some new goodies here in the bushes. We've got some creeping thorns. This thorny ground cover will stick in your socks and generally isn't pleasant on picnics. So we have this little beauty here. Ooh, that's going to look really cool if you size it up too. Look at that. Wow. No different colors. You got just that one. But so we have that ground cover. We have a dry rose bush. This rose is making it a point to show off its thorns. It probably won't win any prizes in a rose competition. I think not. But honestly, guys, that's really cool looking. It's kind of got a purplish red look to it. Look at that. That's kind of neat. It's a four tiles, right? Nope, it's a single tile. My bad. That's kind of nice, actually. That'll look really cool. Uh, we have this one, the Painted Fern, a colorful fern that darkens any garden that gets too cheery. Ooh, and I actually really like that piece too. It kind of reminds me some of the stuff you get from Outdoor Retreat, but it's different colors. I like it, this red stripe down the middle. So there you go. So we got some new foliage. We got new spandrails. So I'm going to go ahead and put up a wall here so we can see. Here's the spandrail that we got, guys. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's look at the different colors. What do we have for color choices? We have in kind of a light brown, we have it in white, dark red, a cherry red, kind of a dark brownish red, I guess, and a green. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up there so you guys can see what it looks like. You know what? Hold on. You guys can't see that for whatever reason. Hold on. Okay, so our walls are up, right? Walls are up. Okay. We're going to go ahead and just stretch this along. There we go. Now you can see it pretty good. There's our spandrail. That's very nicely done. There we go. And we did get some new pillars. We got two new pillars. We have architectural spines and we have a bunch of our standard colors. So they're all just plain colors. It looks like nothing lights up or does anything fancy. Um, let's see. I'm going to see what the difference is between these because the icons look pretty similar, like the color icon choices. Okay. So we do have some regular and we have like some nice pristine and then we have some weathered looks. So with this pillar, you get two different looks. You have this one and then this one has some cracks and stuff on it. So they have all the standard colors, but like I was saying, at least half of these look like half of them are pristine and half are weathered look. And we have the ornate Victorian column. This one looks like we have one, two, three, four, six different colors, and they are standard dark colors that match the same spandrel. So we have this pillar right here, and it actually matches the spandrel really, really well. So there you go. And let's see, we got new stair railings, so we need to put out some stairs. And our stair railings, we have two, like I was saying. We have this one called the iron stairway. Ooh, that's really nice. And we have a bunch of different colors for that one. We have some two tones. Let me see what the difference is here real quick. I don't know. 
Are they weathered too, just like the other ones? Okay, so the same thing happened. I'm gonna put these side by side. I'm gonna have to get some more stairs. So the same thing that happened with these pillars here, we have the pristine and we have the not so pristine. So you have this one that looks really nice and then you have this one that has more weathered, dingy look to it. So as far as our stair railings go, they match the pillars and the spandrail. So here's this one. So you guys can see it once again. And, and there's like little details right here, which are really, really cool. And then we had our pristine one and our weathered look. So we have those. We have four new fences. So as you can see, we have some pristine ones and we have some dingy options right here. We have this one, the neoclassical slim fence. Let's see, let's get a closer look so you guys can see it. And it matches the stair, the stair railing right there. Those are really nice. There we go. I love the color choices. They're kind of our standard color choices and I like them. And this one, uh, we have some dingy options and some pristine options again, which is really cool. I like that they added some of the dingy options because it just, it opens up the doors for us to add a lot more to our builds. And this is the last uh, fencing that we've got. Ooh, this is cool. <gasps> I think this one is my favorite of the new fences. All right, so there's all our fencing. So we got four new fencing. This one is a nice tall fencing if you want people to get out and stay out. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. And we have a new gate. So now that you have seen all of these, I'm gonna plonk this gate down and we have pristine options of gate and we have regular options, like weathered options of this gate. But I'm just going to, oh man. You know what, it goes on any of those. This is probably my longest one. I think we'll put the gate right here just because it'll be easiest to see. That is an awesome gate. Look at the details on that. I'm impressed. That is, that's an amazing gate. I really like it. If that's the only gate we get, which it looks like it is, I'm impressed with the gate. We're going to look at that uh, decorations for our roof. So we've got this, which is the accented roof dormer. Ooh, new roof dormers. <gasps> Those are cool. We have different colors. I'm just gonna scroll through the different colors for you guys to see. <gasps> these are neat. Ooh, these are so cool. I'm gonna leave it in the brighter white so we can really see it. Those are awesome. And we've got this one, the werewolf gargoyle. Crouching menacingly as if to pounce, this werewolf is vigilant, if not terrifying. Sentry, thank goodness it's just stone. <gasps> Look at that. Ooh, you know what? I think I saw this um, in the trailer. This is really awesome. I really like it. I'm gonna leave that up here. Ooh, let's see. I'm gonna leave him. Oh, it has to be turned this way. It's having a hard time. So let me, I'm just gonna pivot it and put it right next to this one. And our very last uh, roof piece we have is the venial roof vent. Ooh, that's pretty too. Let's check out the different colors. So, ooh, I like it in this one. It shows up really well, the details. That's cool. I have shuffled some things around and we're gonna check out our wall decor that we've got here, uh, the wall sculptures. We have lush wall ivy and we have three different colors of ivy. We have green, we have a red, and then we have like a lighter green. So here is the green and I bet you we can put them all one after another. I'm just, there we go, look at that. Those are all the three different colors. I'm gonna make sure that this is a tall wall height so that we can actually see what's going on. I'll space them out just a little bit. So we have all these climbing ivy. These are neat. And we have sparse wall ivy and we have that in three different colors as well. So I'm gonna put the different colors out. And the last one is kind of the green. I think we're gonna get those with all the different ones. Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm not gonna bother putting them all out, but I'm gonna put one of each kind. So we have the dense wall ivy, so that's a nice taller one. And we have the small bramble cling. Ooh, that one's cool. Look at this one. I'm gonna look at the different colors on this one. We're gonna have to. Oh, guys, this is neat. How many color choices? We had one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, look at these. These are super cool. I like that. Those are really cool. Look at how they just hang off of there. <gasps> those are amazing. I like those. And we also have the medium bramble cling. So it's the same thing, only a medium size. We have the dense bramble cling. So that one's a little bit different too. I'm gonna move this away. We're gonna move this stuff over. Yes, we are. Let's check these all out. So we have that one. 
And the last one we have is the tiny bramble patch. Ooh, a little bitty one. Oh man, you guys, we could make some really cool patterns with this stuff. So those are all the different brambles. Actually, I am gonna leave that one there so we can see all the different colors. I'll put them right next to each other and we're gonna move this one over because it looks like we have some other stuff that I wanna showcase and I don't want it to get lost in translation. So here we go, look at this, they can like, oh, these are gonna be amazing. These are wonderful wall clings basically. Cause look at this, it's almost like a flawless from one piece to the next. Oh my gosh, we can totally do things on the side of our houses. That's gonna be amazing. We have the gargoyles howl. Well, that's cool. Different colors on this one. I'm gonna probably leave it on a lighter one so we can really see it. We have some weathered pieces and we have some that are more pristine looking. There we go. Let's get a closer look to check it out. Oop, if my camera would behave. Look at that. That's pretty neat. That one's one of the pristine ones. And I will show you one of the weathered looks next to it. See, there you go. There's the weathered look. So they're almost the same. It just looks a little dirty. And, uh, I'm gonna put that one down here, actually. We've got the stone-faced wall fountain. Oh, I love wall fountains. These are amazing. I love, love, love wall fountains. Let's look at the different colors. And we have weathered versions and regular versions again. And these are all nice stone pieces. So there's a weathered stone and that's a pristine one. We have the hanging werewolf wall jumper, which is really cool. It's kind of similar to that, uh, the one on the, um, on the top of the house. Oh, the roof decor. <gasps> Look at the different colors on this one, guys. And we have pristine versions and dirty versions. This thing is awesome. I'm gonna leave it on this one so you guys can see the detail, but guys, that is so cool. That is really cool. All right, so let's check out some doors. We have new doors and I think, okay, so we have, um, the mausoleum's gate. And this one looks like it has pristine versions as well as weathered versions. Yes, it does. These are neat. Oh my gosh, these are cool. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on that one. We also have this one, which is eternal arches. So it's the same thing, just as an arch instead of a doorway. Oh, these are cool. Very, very cool. Weathered ones and regular ones again. And is that it for the doors? No, we have two more doors. We have the arched Victorian double door, and this one also comes with weathered versions and regular versions. Oh, wow. We're gonna have to pivot so we can see the different colors, but check these all out. Ooh, I like those. Oh, those are so cool, guys. We have this one, which is called the Soulful Entrance. Ooh, look at that door. Oh, I really like the double colors on this one. These are really pretty. Oh, these are so pretty. Okay, I can't choose which one I want to put it at. Probably this one. That one's really nice. All right, so let's check out the windows because we have our doors. Let's check out all our windows. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five different windows to look at. We have this one, the window de elegance. It matches the door. Oh, it doesn't want to do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to just, um, we're going to leave it on this one. They have all the same colors as our door, but it's obviously just, it's a window. We have this one. I'm going to switch this one over too so we can see it. It's a little bit on the smaller side compared to that one. So this one is um, for small walls and this one is for the tall walls. We have the rectangular Victorian window. Let's see. And we have different colors for this one. Ooh, look at the color choices on this one. That's kind of a green color, that's neat. And this is going to match that one. I'm gonna put it right next to it. And then we have a double option. And there's all the choices there. I'm gonna actually scoot these over just a little bit. Yeah, we'll give them some space. So there are all the window choices that we got. It looks like we have some new flooring. So we're gonna show all of the new flooring for the vampires. We have, ooh, dungeon-esque stone, and we have a bunch of different colors in this one. So what we're gonna do, I think, is we're gonna set out a couple tiles of each. 
side by side so we can see all of the different colors because this is changing what the stones look like. So it no longer looks like plastered stone all one color. It actually has, I don't know, for lack of better terminology, it has movement. So it's pleasing to the eye. It's not all boring one color. It actually has depth. Maybe that's the better word for it. We have some depth going on. So it's like very 3D. I like those. Look at all that. Those are really, really awesome. They're going to look really good, really good. And we have this one. It's called Play with Squares. Ooh, fun. Look at the colors of these. I like the squares. These are fun. This would look good um, even with the brick. Like you could make a really cool front fo foyer or something like that. I think that would look really neat. We have this one, which is the spider tile, which is similar to that kind of stuff, but it's a little more fancy. These would look good together. You could probably do um, like every other tile or something. Look how it's fitting together with the one beside it. It's making really cool looking patterns. Oh, that's neat. Look at those. So when you have multiple tiles, Obviously, if they were all the same color, you wouldn't have these weird color transitions. But look at the pattern that this makes. It actually makes this pattern right here. That's so cool. I love it. That's awesome. Very awesome. So we're going to look at this one, the Starry Pattern Brocade. So it looks like we have some carpet. Ooh, that's pretty carpet. Look at the color choices, guys. This would make an awesome area rug or a like a runner rug down a hallway. Oh, this is cool. I cannot wait to explore Forgotten Hollow and check out the houses that are built here. I want to look on the inside to see how they used these vampirish pieces, how they use the Victorian styled look stuff. So there's those. We have the floral pattern brocade. So now we have floral pattern. I'm getting, I don't want to miss any of the colors. I want to put them all out because they all look so cool. I love how they've done them. Like I said, it's very 3D looking and the, the quality is great. Like the detail on these is awesome. Area rugs, runner rugs, full carpeted in like a really awesome looking library or something. <gasps> oh, the possibilities. I have so many ideas, guys. So many ideas. All right, we have this one, the styled parquet. Ooh, that's fancy parquet wood flooring. Look at that. Those are cool. That would look good in a front entrance. I'm always putting a little bit of this kind of stuff in a front entrance, like it's a, a welcome mat rug, but it's not a rug, obviously. And we have the, var the Victorian parquet. So we actually have, looks like diagonal striped wood flooring. I like it a lot. I really, really like that. And look at all the different colors. Oops, let's not do that though. Let's not do that. I don't want to cover that stuff up. No, I do not. So here's all our flooring. Ooh, I am impressed with the flooring choices that we got. Oh, I absolutely love the flooring choices that we got. Oh, I really do. I really do. Okay, so the last thing we have to look at, folks, is wallpapers. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different wall coverings. We've got the Victorian wall pattern, lots of different colors of this one. And it looks like the baseboards are changing. So we have gray and we have white and we have black and we have brown for the baseboards. And then we have all the different color choices for the wallpaper itself. Ooh, look at that. That's cool. I'm going to go ahead and we'll put two tiles of this one up in blue. And like I said, I told you what the different colors and this one does the same thing. So your baseboards are always changing colors and you have them all in the same stuff. So I'm going to just pick, how about green? We'll put a couple of those out. We have this one, the pattern bat column, and it has the same stuff going on and we'll choose it in pink. Oh, look at that. That's pretty, very pretty. We have the new classic wall paneling. And this one, it looks like, oh, those are neat. Okay, so the little style on the top. Look at these. Look at that, guys. That's cool. I really like it. It's very, very cool. Those are really neat. Oh my goodness, that's very neat. Okay, 
So we have some bricks and the bricks are really, really cool. Again, they are very variegated in their colors. So I'm gonna put out a couple of them. Here's some different choices for the different bricks side by side. And we have this one, which is the brick pattern with corner. So this is the same thing with the bricks, except as you can see, I'm gonna put on the bottom just cause you can see that one better. Um, you can see right here, it has the edge, the brick edge right here. So it's the same as all the brick ones right here, but it has an edge piece. We have the floral bat motif. And so we're gonna put that up there and we're gonna go take a quicker look in just a second. And this is the other bat motif. So let's go ahead and look at those really quickly. So we had this one. And it does have little bats flying and flowers. It looks kind of like happy bats. And we have this one that up close, you can tell that it's a bat, but from far away, it doesn't show up as much that it is a bat wallpaper. But there's all the wallpapers and the doors and the windows. I'm gonna put this back up where it belongs. Okay, so before I wrap this one up, I want to check out the new lot trays that we got because I did see a couple new ones added. This one, the registered vampire layer. The lot registers as a vampire layer. The league will send various gifts from time to time, through the mail, no less. Even the immortals can use the public mail service, only available on home residents. So I'm not exactly sure what happens, but that sounds like fun. So we have that one. We have on a dark ley line, the dark energy here has an impact on not all nocturnal activities. You can expect babies conceived here to require extra care while teething. So I'm assuming that that will make more vampire babies. That would be cool. We have this one, the vampire nexus. A dark void envelopes this lot in the upside down. Vampires are more likely to visit the area. So that's pretty awesome. So it looks like those are the new lot traits. We have vampire nexus on a dark line and registered vampire lair. So guys, as far as I know, this is everything from the new Sims 4 Vampire Stuff Pack that comes in the build mode. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out all of the new goodies for the very first time with me, and I hope that you guys will come back and check out everything in the buy mode. Also, make sure you check out my Create a Sim if you haven't seen it. So anyways, I want you guys to go out there and be a pineapple. I want you to stand up tall, wear a crown, and be sweet on the inside. I will see each and every one of you guys next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye guys.